wanted to take some time to speak on the new TNA explosion. This is probably not going to be the most popular upload on the channel, but I still felt it was my duty to kind of, you know, to, to watch a couple episodes and see what I thought of it. I wanted to record this several days ago, but with the all, all the Scott D. Moore stuff going on, this wasn't really appropriate, but um, I'm going to take a little time this morning to talk about Explosion, uh, the overall format of it, what I think, you know, is this a, a step up? Is it an upgrade from what they were doing before? Is this going to work as a second show? And the answer to most of those questions is yes. I do think this is better than the uh, previous Explosion. I think it's better than before the impact. But I think the what, what really helps this show is that there are two matches. When people were asking me, whether it was DM or mailbag, you know, I always got a lot of questions like, well, what do you, what would you do for a second show? And I always said, uh, I think they do need two matches because the problem is a lot of the time, the match was complete bullshit that no one cared about. So with this one, they're kind of doing that. Like they kick it off with a match. No one cares about. And then there's a pretty good main event. Uh, the common denominator in the two matches that no one cares about is Rhino. He's, he, so I've seen two episodes so far. I think the third one is out on TNA Plus, but I'm not currently a subscriber. Uh, I'm kind of I'm 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 kind of waiting to see what everyone's overall thoughts are on TNA Plus because Impact Plus kind of burned me. So um, and <laughs> I didn't realize until re recently I was I was paying for two Impact Plus accounts for like two years, so uh, they got my money. So once I know uh, what people think of TNA Plus, like really think of it, then I'll I'll subscribe. But you know, uh, so I haven't seen a third episode, but um, the common denominator is Rhino in the in the opening match. He took on Shira in the first one, and uh, Champagne Singh in the other, who I'm I'm getting to enjoy quite a bit. But regarding Rhino, my concern is that Explosion is going to become the Rhino show, because I think they feel like they the crowd needs the gore to kick off the the night when they're doing tapings. Because when you see Rhino wrestle, it's the same match every time. You're going to get the gore whether he wins or loses. That's why I don't enjoy Rhino matches. He he can win and hit it, or if he loses, like he's hitting it. It's, someone's getting gored. You know what I'm saying? So uh, they do kind of kick it off the match one cares about, but the one with Champagne Singh was not so bad because, number one, he got a killer theme song. And I've enjoyed the evolution of his character. I wasn't a big fan of his when he first started. He was part of the um, Desi Hit Squad. I wasn't I wasn't a huge fan, but as time has progressed, I've liked his his uh, his growth. And then they do the uh, the old clips. You know, they show almost it's not quite in its its entirety. You know, it's maybe four or five minutes, but you're getting the AJ Styles and the Christopher Daniels matches and. I understand you probably want to use explosion on as far as YouTube goes when it once it uploads to YouTube to kind of promote TNA plus, but I just don't think, and I've never thought it was a good idea to show so much footage of better times, bigger stars, better production quality, you know, hyper crowds. I just, I don't think that's like beneficial, but they clearly disagree. So that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Gia Miller does do the commentary like she was doing on BTI, and I think she does a very good job. You know, I have talked many times about when she first started with the company and she sent her like an absolute robot. And she has just come a long way of just, uh, just sounding natural, witty, uh, entertaining, just playing very well off uh, Tom Hannafin. So, I'm, you know, I can dig it. It, it definitely gives a different flavor uh, than just the regular commentary team doing the show. And she does the around the ring segment that Josh Matthews used to do, which Josh usually did a pretty good job with those. This one, she sounds great. And well, first and foremost, the production quality is 200% better than on impact and the backstage segments, the backstage segments, they're standing in the dark and they're fucking with the color levels, and this just looks good. I don't, I don't know why they can't. It can't look like this on the show, but it looks two hundred percent better. And the, the the interviews, though, the questions are awful. 
And when people would ask me, what would you do for a second show? I would say, hey, do the interview, but in a way that we get to know the wrestler. Like, I think that between the ropes, I think they call it, it's always ropes and rings. Between the ropes that Tom Hannafin does, like, I can't, I can't watch those, number one, because they're playing loud music in the background, and number two, because it's not natural and doesn't feel like he's really asking questions. Like, it's kind of, you know, it's too kayfabe-ish for me, and Tom doesn't really come off as, as very natural to me ever, so... I, I like the dynamic here where it's more natural and we're kind of getting to know them. But the questions fucking suck. I mean, whoever they have next week, I don't remember. I wouldn't be surprised if she doesn't ask, what's your favorite color? Or if you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be? I mean, the questions are are bad. We listen to Jody Threat talk about breakfast for like two minutes. Um, I get it, though. I do get it. But I think you have to format these interviews much like you would a wrestling show where you kind of got the openers and the fillers, but then there's a main event at the end. I do think I do think you kind of got to sign off with something that people really care about. And I think that makes a little more sense to do it that way. And the the comparison I've always used was that that they did for a little while in the pop TV days was my first day in TNA. And they kind of talked about their first day in the company. Um I think that would be a nice little touch to kind of throw in there or how the company's grown since. Like, I don't want to know where they trained and if their grandpa turned them on to wrestling when they were a kid. Like, I don't care about any of that. I do want to know a little bit about them. So I think they're doing a good job. But you, you got to throw something in there that has some meat on it. And and there there isn't. Like, it's lacking any kind of real juice. It's just kind of hearing them ramble about nothing for five minutes. So... I would I would improve that a little bit, but but Gia is doing a good job. The, the lighting looks excellent, and it was kind of similar with BTI. Like BTI always looked better than Impact, and I just I just didn't get it. And this is really no different. <laughs> and then they they do a second match that is good that people care about. Like the first time was Rich Swan and Joe Hendry. People cared about it, and then they did Rich Swan versus uh, Jason Hotch, and. That match, if you get an opportunity to go back and watch that, that was really good. Jason Hotch is very talented. We had just haven't really got an opportunity to see it. And unfortunately, we didn't get to see this on Impact. We saw John Schuyler wrestle instead. But, but Hotch is good. There was one point where where Swan hit a lethal injection on him. And, I mean, I've never seen someone take a cutter like that. That was just insane. Like, this guy can sell. And then... He won. He actually beat Swan. So Swan is on a losing streak. So they kind of got a little bit of a storyline going. And it's happening on Explosion. And it's carrying into Impact, which is very good. But um, Rich, so yeah, Rich Swan takes the loss. And I've always been talking about finishers and Impact, right? Like, where's the good finishers? And, you know, I remember being excited because Giselle Shaw came and, and Alan Angels. And I said, well, they both got awesome finishers. And then they get to Impact and they use fucking shit finishers. And I'm just like, what is going on here? What is, what is wrong with this company and the finishers? So Jason Hotch, he hits a move that's, it's if you remember Steve Macklin's Mayhem for All that he used to use, which I also don't think was a good finisher. You know, he has him in a, kind of like you're going to drop him for the reverse DDT but then you pick him up and just slam him on his back. It's basically mayhem for all, except he does like a 360. It's very impressive. It's a really good looking finisher, but um, it was a good match. I, I do encourage you guys to go back and watch that. If you have watched anything um, or if, if you're going to watch anything regarding explosion, but, and then finally, you know, um, and they do this before the final match, but they do like a top 10, no, I'm excuse me, top five trend, you know, what's trending right now. They got a, Don West face and says, are you kidding me? And top try top five training moments. I think that's a really nice little touch as well. I just want to see if these cowards next episode put number one, Scott Demore fired by Len Asper. That's what I, I want to see, but obviously they won't do that, but it's, it's a really nice little touch uh, of just what, what people are talking. And I think they might've done that on BTI. I don't think the format is that much different than BTI. I just, didn't really care because you know they kind of had highlights and just stuff I didn't care about on that show. So they're not showing, you know, highlights. They're not going overboard with anything like that. But it's a nice little show. It's it's probably a step up. Uh, will it work? I don't know. 
I don't know if it's going to be something that like long-term people care about. This could very well fade into obscurity quickly, but I think they're in a pretty good start here. And if they continue to kind of, you know, build a little bit of a story and tie it into impact, I think it can work. It's a pretty easy watch, uh, but I don't want to see it be the rhino show, the gore show. Like we don't, no one really cares that much about the gore. Like it's, it's not necessary to kick off every um, episode with that, but it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, I'm, you know, I give it a good seven out of 10 so far. I do want to see them tighten up these interviews to, to just give us one question that we actually care about. And then we can kind of sit through the, you know, what, what's your favorite animal type of shit. 